Well, the audit says the department is quick to make changes after shootings or after deaths. She suffered a deep bite to her leg, all because a dog was off leash in this grassy area. Governor Kitzhaber, may I ask you a few questions? Governor, I'm curious what your thoughts are about the grand jury investigation into Cover Oregon in the state. Governor, if you have a few moments, I'd like to ask you some questions about Cover Oregon. Governor, do you think you should give the money back? Three quarters of the time, charges were never brought against those people. So just a little bit of context on a day that just seems so surreal. The best score was 12. Only Georgia got that one. Everyone wants to know, how did we get here? And emails will help paint that picture. The commission posts the discipline online, but it can sometimes take years to close a case. Ice skates and tennis rackets are perfectly fine to carry on. What would you say to Portlanders? Source might have a case. The law professor I talked to today said it could come down to two things. We want to ensure that these body cameras are going to be transparent. As the air her family was breathing was more polluted than other places in Portland. Shock gave way to action and now she's... It was All Hallows' Eve and all hell was about to break loose. Dwayne Abbott fired up his Mustang and went for a drop in the pouring rain. On this busy stretch in Vancouver, Abbott lost control of his car, plowing into four trick-or-treaters who probably never saw it coming. Cadence Boyer, just seven years old, would not survive. Abbott told investigators he last had a joint just three hours before the crash. Dwayne Abbott took a piece of my heart, my family's heart, and I would never get that piece of heart back. We know that there's a need and we just kind of feel that need. Raf Malate is working to spare other families from the Boyer's heartbreak. He's the CEO of Cannabix Technologies, a Canadian company developing this marijuana breathalyzer. Law enforcement agents need the ability to detect marijuana impaired drivers. On the side of the road, police don't have that. The best they can do is a field sobriety test. The marijuana breathalyzer will have the look and feel of an alcohol breathalyzer. And even though marijuana can linger in your system for days, Malate says his breathalyzer will be able to tell if a driver smoked within the last two hours. And that is significant because he says it likely means a driver is dangerous behind the wheel. Cannabis provides instantaneous results. We're watching that technology develop very closely. Bob Calkins is with the Washington State Patrol. Recently, he's seen more drivers riding their high behind bars. In 2012, about 19% of blood samples from drivers tested positive for THC. In 2013, the first full year recreational weed was legal in Washington. That number jumped to nearly 25%. What do you make of this device? We won't be an early adopter. Why? Um, we want to make sure that the courts will be ready to accept it. The device is still a prototype, so before they consider taking on this new tool, they'll wait for the device to be court certified. Dwayne Abbott's fate is still up in the air. Steeped in grief, Cadence Boyer's family now marks that hellish Halloween night by haunting his court hearings. I want him to see the photo. I want to show what he's done. <laughs> He took our little princess away. What he's done what to he's our done. families, he's destroyed it. <laughs> because TSA screeners have strict and sometimes confusing rules about what not to bring through airport security. Take this golf club, for instance. The TSA says this could be used to hurt people, so you don't want to check it or leave it at home. But to save you time, I investigated the do's and don'ts of presents to bring on the plane. Well, this is Portland, you know, keep Portland right. weird. And the kinds of things that you see come through here sometimes are, it just boggle your mind. Oregon TSA Director Mike Irwin shows us some of the scary and downright absurd items confiscated at security checkpoints at PDX. And this is just a small sampling, believe me. If you're packing presents like these in your carry-on, it's safe to say TSA screeners are going to take them away. 
like this specialty gift. I'm not convinced that that's the easiest way to skin a moose. Most people forget that it's in their bag. When people say, I just forgot, uh -huh. do you buy that? For the most part, yeah, because there's so many. We get about 2.3 million people flying a day during our busiest days. Toys resembling weapons are also a no-no, no matter how fake they look. All of these plastic guns were confiscated at TSA checkpoints, even that orange and green one. This toy plastic chainsaw splattered with obviously fake blood didn't make it through either. Yeah, toy weapons are not a good idea because you don't, you know, what distinguishes between a toy weapon and a non-toy weapon, right? Neither did this harmless grenade art or this gag gift. Keep in mind, the TSA treats these like real explosives until proven otherwise, which could mean delays. We see everything coming through. After a while, you just, it just doesn't even amaze you anymore. But other gifts you'd think would be a problem won't even make TSA agents blink. Ice skates and tennis rackets are perfectly fine to carry on. But TSA screeners will stop you for hockey sticks and baseball bats because the TSA says these could be used to, quote, bludgeon. Musical instruments can also hold you up. I spotted a couple of guitars on the TSA Instagram account that shows confiscated goods. Instruments are allowed on the plane but can be subject to extra inspection. So give yourself extra time if you plan to carry them on. If you're bringing something for Christmas dinner, liquids and gels like jams over 3.4 ounces are still not allowed. But you can bring your favorite foods, even pies. Okay. We do thousands of voodoo donuts every day. I'm very proud of the fact that uh, people are bringing them through. But remember, all food must go through the x-ray machine and must be wrapped or in a container. When in doubt, Owen says, put the gifts in your checked baggage to make sure your presence get on the plane. Well, so far this year, TSA screeners confiscated 2,000 guns nationwide, the most they've confiscated in about a decade. 30 of those guns were from Oregon. By the way, some of you may want to wrap your presents, which is perfectly fine, except that TSA may need to unwrap them when you go through security if it's uh, for extra inspection. If you're not sure what to bring, TSA has a very helpful app and a website that will break that all down for you. We've put that on our website at k2.com. Just some helpful tips and things to consider for those who might be at the mall. Betty is 79 going on 80 and has a lifetime of stories to tell. Traveler, wife, mother to seven, grandmother to 11, great-grandmother to 16. But these days, life has slowed down. Health problems have taken their toll. I have really, really bad knees, and it's just bone on bone. Then this summer, a new diagnosis, esophageal cancer. It's why Betty and her family decided she needed extra help around the house. In May, she hired Jamie Foster off of the DHS-approved caregivers list. Betty says she said all the right things. When we were having health issues or anything, you know, she'd say, I'm praying for you. But within a few months, Betty was the one praying when she realized some of her belongings were disappearing. First, cash in her safe. And, and the envelope was gone with $1,780 in there. I was numb at first. I gave her, I just kept saying to myself, you know, you know, she wouldn't do this. She wouldn't do it. Then $200 vanished from her purse. But for Betty, the most devastating loss of all her precious jewelry. It's memories for me. Things I want to give to my kids, my daughters, my grandkids that have no meaning to her at all. Betty filed a report with the Clackamas County Sheriff's Office. That was almost two weeks ago. As of today, no arrest. Frustrated, Betty's family turned to the On Your Side investigators. And when I tracked down Foster by phone this afternoon, she broke down and confessed. Why did you do it? I have a gambling problem that I am seeking help for. Foster reluctantly admitted her secret vice is video poker. I would just go straight to the poker machines. And I do feel bad, and I'm very sorry. A revelation of betrayal that Betty says makes her sick. That you could go into somebody's home and they trust you with everything, you know? And I just feel deep down inside that I'm not the only victim out there.